This video is an introduction to the determinant of a matrix. So in this case, we're going to limit ourselves to the case of an n by n matrix. The number of columns and the number of rows are equal, as I have indicated here by the various elements that we have, which in general, each of these elements is a single uh, potentially complex, but often just a real number. So the determinant of A, we can represent by this DET open parentheses of A, or we can represent it by this kind of vertical bar, the type of magnitude type symbol that we use for vectors. So what is the determinant of, an, of a square matrix? So in general, this is a rather complicated expression from the outset, but let's look into it. So what we're going to have is we're going to have the product of the diagonal of the matrix and then we're going to exchange some of the indices and do a different and do a different product where we include all of the columns and all of the rows exactly once and then we're going to do that either multiplying times minus one or one each case and do that for all possible combinations of products of going down our matrix now in general that sounds quite complicated and it can be quite complicated but let's look at some simple examples to see how it works so the determinant of a one by one matrix is just that element itself it's just a one one the determinant of a two by two matrix all the possible ways we can multiply down uh, elements having elements of each row and column exactly once is we do a one one times a two two that's the first one then we flip two indices we go a one two a two one <clears throat> those are the only two possible and since we did one exchange in order to do this result this gets a minus sign here so this is a one one a two two minus a one two a two one for three by three we start getting more complicated uh, as i said for an n by n matrix there's going to be n factorial terms that show up so beyond three by three this starts to get very complicated very fast and in each term there are n products here we multiplied one number by itself we got one term We multiplied two numbers each time and there were two terms two factorial is two for a three by three matrix there are going to be three factorial or six different terms and there's going to be three products per term so first we do a11 a22 a33 a12 a23 a32 etc including all possibilities of how we can multiply down uh, having each column and each row represented once so you can do this by another method called cofactor expansion where we take this number times the determinant of this this number times the determinant of this this number times the determinant of this as I have written out here and then alternating positive and minus signs you could repeat that for a 4 by 4 or a 5 by 5 but again this starts to get very complicated very quickly for for 4 by 4 there are 24 terms for 5 by 5 there are 120 and good luck uh, doing anything on paper larger than that so for a 3 by 3 this is what all these terms end up being when you apply the proper minus and plus symbols for all those possible permutations okay so that all seems very kind of abstract and general and doesn't have a lot of necessarily real world consequence yet so let's see what some properties of these determinants are so this determinant works because it's kind of a metric for what the magnitude of the matrix is so a scalar is a quantity with only magnitude we showed what the magnitude of a vector is so the determinant is kind of analogous to the magnitude of a matrix so let's see what that what that gives us for some general properties of determinants so if we have the determinant of a times b so we multiply let's say matrix c equals a times b what is the determinant of c that's equal to the determinant of a times the determinant of b and that makes sense if you have a if you have two things which have a magnitude you multiply them together the resulting is the magnitude of the product so that makes sense as far as determinants go all right what about the determinant of the inverse of a matrix so we haven't we haven't discussed a lot of these properties yet but if you remember them at all uh, just keep those in mind so the determinant of the inverse of a matrix is one over the determinant of that matrix 
So that makes sense because if you do the inverse of something, you think one over that thing, one over itself would be the magnitude of the new inverse of that. We have what we will describe as identity matrices in the next video. Matrices that only have ones down the diagonal and zero everywhere else. Well, every one of those products except for the first one is going to be zero, and that first one is going to be one. So the determinant of an identity matrix is going to be equal to one. We'll also introduce determinants that are called, we'll also introduce matrices called unitary matrices in the next video. Their determinant is also one. We'll introduce the concept of the transpose of a matrix. So the transpose of a matrix, its determinant is going to be the same as the determinant of the original matrix. Uh, what if we have a scalar multiple times our matrix? So the determinant of alpha times A. Well in that case we're multiplying every single element by A so in that case, in our product, every single one of these products has alpha in it. So we're multiplying alpha n times, and it shows up in every single term. So what we're doing is multiplying times alpha to the n for whatever our determinant is. So that equals alpha to the n times the determinant of a. OK, <clears throat> if we have a diagonal matrix, a matrix which only has non-zero values down the diagonal here. Determinant of some diagonal matrix. Well, that first product is the only one that's going to have not have any zeros in it. So the determinant of a diagonal matrix is equal to the product from i equals 1 to n. It's the product of all the diagonal elements of that matrix. <clears throat> so straightforward when all the zeros cancel out and do get rid of all the work for you there. All right, and then lastly of interest, which we'll talk about in a video or two, is that the determinant of a matrix is also equal to the product of all the eigenvalues of that matrix. So we'll discuss eigenvalues in a few videos. Those are very important properties of a given matrix and show up everywhere and all the time in quantum mechanics. So these are the eigenvalues of A, which we'll discuss in a video or two. So those are the general properties of determinants. A lot of these types of matrices we haven't discussed yet, but I'm just bringing that up so in case you come back here after we've discussed what they are, you can see uh, how the determinant changes for all these cases. Uh, in general, it's a very complicated expression, but it's a simpler idea if you think about the idea of multiplying all the combinations of the ways you can include each row and each column only once, and taking the appropriate combinations of minus and plus signs for the products of all of those cases.